We looked at the basics and that is fine, but now it's time to make a real custom camera. Something that's not available in Godot by default. And this is something that will look like this. Instant screen transitions. To achieve that, we'll chop up the game world, we'll create a virtual grid, and every time the player will go to a new cell, we will change the camera position. Now this is not going to be a square grid, it's going to be based on cells that have the same size as the window. Here's our starting point. It's similar to what we had before, where we initialize the camera's position when the game is ready. First of all, we need a function that will return the player's position on the world grid. And then we'll need to update the camera whenever the player changes cells. In order to get the player's position on the grid, we need a few things. First of all, we need his position. Let's start with that, add a position variable and it's going to be equal to player.getPose. We have to convert it to fit the grid. A grid has two axes, the x and y axes. That's why we need two variables. Each variable will be the player's position divided by the window size. And you use the same axis, so the window width in that case, window size.x. Same thing for the y coordinate will divide the y position of the character by window size.y. This is not enough, however, because we're going to get floating values with that division. So we have to use the floor function to make sure that we get an integer for one, but on top of that, that we get the right coordinates for the cell. Finally, we can return those coordinates as a vector2 that contains x and y. That's it. To see if our function works, we can print the result that we get with the get player grid pose. Try out the game and see what kind of output we get. Once we get past the right edge of the screen, the x coordinate jumps from 0 to 1, and if we go down the screen, the y value jumps from 0 to 1. It's now time to update the camera's position when the character changes cells. We'll do it in a simple way. So we need to know when the player has changed cell. So we will compare the old and the new player position on the grid. And if it has changed, we'll update the camera's position just like we did in the previous videos. So first let's create a local variable, new player grid pose, for example and we'll get the player grid position. Then I'll create an empty transform variable and that will be a matrix 3, 2. It is I want to return that transform. So this transform is going to be where we place the camera. It's our canvas transform if you want. And it's always interesting to return those kinds of values from the functions just so that then from somewhere else in the script when you call the update camera function you can print it to the console if you want to create some debug functionality in your script. If the new player position is different from our player world position up there we will update the camera position. So we'll first update the player's world position it'll be equal to new player grid pose then we will do the same thing we did in the past We'll set the transform variable to get viewport dot get canvas transform like that. And then we will modify the third slot in this array to place the camera. Remember, this is a matrix three two. We'll set it to minus player world pose. Remember, we always have to invert the coordinates here times the window size. Both the player world position and our window size are vector twos, so their x and y components will get multiplied by one another respectively, which will properly place the camera both on the x and the y axis. Then we have to update the camera transform with get viewport dot set canvas transform.
and we'll set it to our transform variable. And that is it. Let's try out the game now and see that it works. There's a little bit of extra code because we have to manage the grid, but compared to the previous tutorial, there are not so many new concepts. However, we have one problem still. As the character is, the code is using the player's position and the character's pivot point is between his feet. It's its center of mass on the ground. When you are going up, the character has to get fully or almost fully out of the frame before the camera updates. And that is something we will change in the get player grid pose. We'll just remove the player size divided by two. With that bit of code, now the camera will transition whenever the midpoint of the character gets out of the frame. This, what you just saw, is a simple solution to the problem, something you do in a game jam or in a game prototype, for example. It's valid, but in the context of a more complex game, inspired by Zelda, for instance, you would use a tile map for the level and you'd probably use a grid for everything related to the enemy AI, for instance. So because of that, you would use that grid and have a number of functions that allow you to detect the player's position and move the camera accordingly. But for a simple game, the approach you have on screen will work just fine.